So hello everyone, welcome to our week of AGRA Ask the Expert sessions. I'm delighted to have with me Carol Ann Kerry Green, who has taken a look at three questions sent in by readers of Who Do You Think You Are magazine. So thank you for joining us, Carol. Hi, thank you for having us. Our first question today was sent in by Colin Wallace, who says, I'm having trouble tracking down the father of my maternal grandmother, Lena Hatherley. She was born on the 18th of April 1906, but only has her mother, Selina Lena Hatherley, born 1881, on her birth certificate. So, Carol, illegitimacy, this is a common brick wall for family historians. Do you have any advice for Colin? Is there any route he can explore? Yeah, it is <clears throat> It is a difficulty because, as you know, with the father's name on the birth certificate, it's uh, very hard to find out who that is. Um, but there are things that he can do to check this out. And um, I did have a little look and uh, in the um, Lena was um, in 1911. She was in the workhouse and um, the, her, the, the daughter Lena was a sort of like um, having mother and daughter having very similar names is always uh, difficult. Um, but the, the daughter, Lena, was um, four years old and she was um, boarded out. And it looks like she could have been boarded out by the local uh, board of guardians if the mother was being looked after in the workhouse or was in the workhouse for whatever reason. And the child was there. They may have boarded her out to another family, which could have been what happened in this case. And um, Devon archives have got quite a lot of um, material for the um, border guardians um, workhouse in the area at that time so it would certainly be worth looking in there of course the problem at the moment is that um, like all archives they're closed but um, if there's any information that would probably be where it would be I would imagine I mean it'd be very difficult otherwise to um, to track down who the father is. So there might be be um, that you know that the the workhouse or the board of guardians might have put a comment somewhere saying who the father or putative father was. Is that what you're? Yeah, that's uh, right. They they may have done that. I mean, you know, as today they want you know sort of people to pay for bringing up the the children, and I'm sure if they could have recouped any of the money from the uh, from the father, then I'm sure they would have done. Um, but of course. You know, records don't always survive no. as we would like them. Um, and there may be gaps in the records, but I think it's certainly worth checking to see, you know, if there's anything there. So basically, she needs to get in touch with, was it Devon Record Office? Yeah, the Devon Record Office, yeah. Have a look at, see, so have a look at their workhouse and poor law records. Thank you, that's excellent. And of course, there's always DNA is another option. Yeah. That was right. Uh, yeah. The other thing I was uh, I was going to uh, mention of uh, of maybe doing a DNA test if not already done because sometimes you can then you know sort of uh, eliminate any of the maternal um, sort of like matches that come up and what you're left with could be paternal ones. Um, I know some people have had um, excellent results doing this, but it can be quite time consuming and take you know takes quite some time before you find the person you're looking for. Yeah. So there's it's not it's not a hopeless case, Colin. You can he can have a look and see if there's anything kept in the records. So thank you very much. Our second question was sent in by Liz Thomas. She's looking for the birth and marriage of Thomas Allett in the 18th century in Thorpe Helsley in Yorkshire. And she says it's quite a long one, this, but the first evidence of my Allett family is in, in Thorpe Hesley, is in the Wentworth Parish Registers, which record the baptism of William to Thomas and Elizabeth Allett on the 12th of July, 1764. But unfortunately, the Wentworth Parish records are missing just prior to his christening. So it's not known if the missing records contain the marriage of his parents or the birth of any siblings. So it's not helped by the fact that records of residents of what became Thorpe Hesley Parish could be in Ecclesfield, Wentworth or Rotherham registers, depending on where they lived in the village. So, whew, Carol, we're going further back in time here, back to the 18th century. Family history gets mm. a bit more tricky once you leave those sort of bedrocks of census and civil registration behind. So 
in this case, particularly, it's not helped by missing parish registers. Is there anything more that Liz can do to find birth or marriage of Thomas Allott in Yorkshire? Yeah, I mean, it is difficult because when parish registers go, go missing and they're the, the thing, they become the, the bedrock, as you say, in 18th century and prior. And if they're not there, it becomes very difficult to try and trace people. Um, one thing to look is to see was whether there were any transcripts of the um, registers before they went missing. Um, some um, antiquarian societies in the 19th century um, did some transcripts of registers. It's always worth checking to see if there's anything like that. And again, they would be held at the local archives if they did. Um, the other thing, of course, is to check whether the, the anything recorded in the bishop's transcripts. Um, yeah, now the bishop's transcripts are BTs, as we tend to call them, um, are a copy of the parish register that was sent to the um, archbishop or the you know sort of bishop in charge every every year. And they were, you know, supposed to be an exact copy of the parish register, but occasionally things do get added into the BTs that were in the parish register and also conversely get left off the BTs that were in the parish register. So if there's an option to check the BTs, that's always a good one. Um, are, they, are those records missing as well? Or, you know, sort of, are they there? I mean, the difficulty here, as you say, is because there's three different parishes that, you know, to, to check. Um, so it's a bit more work looking through the parishes. Now, this area of Yorkshire has been transcribed on the Find My Past Yorkshire collection. Um, so if you've been using the search function, there's a, a few tricks, tips and tricks to try with that. And that's to remember that names weren't always um, the same. Um, mm. I mean, Alot, she's got A double L O double T. Of course, it could be A L O T, but also things things like Alcott, A L C O T, -T as uh, you know, handwriting back then wasn't always the easiest to read. Sometimes, you know, you got to think of different things. But also, um, were they married outside of those parishes? It could be that you know, if the bride um, Elizabeth in this case was from a parish nearby, that they got married in in her parish. Now, that could be. Uh, but, you know, so you start with their parish and start working around. It can take quite some time to look through the registers. But the other thing to do is um, if they have any children after William um, or have any of them got a middle name that could be um, the mother's maiden name. Sometimes families like to carry on the mother's maiden name in that case. And then you can start searching for, for that name as well and try and see if you can find that, find the family that way. So there's plenty of uh, little avenues that um, she can try there. And I think it sounds like checking out the archives again would be helpful and seeing what they have. Yeah. Um, so we're all waiting for those to reopen. Hopefully yes, that will help. Nice. <laughs> and find out where the bishop's transcripts for the area are held. That would yeah. be very helpful. So um, plenty for Liz to, to get thinking about there. And uh, finally, we've got a query from Hayley Bond. Uh, who has a rather sad story to share about her grandfather, Edwin Crump. And she writes and says, my grandfather was sent to live with his grandparents when he was only five, went by train and was never told why. He only saw his mum a couple of times after that. I believe that his parents, Arthur Edwin Crump and Annie Bishop, got divorced. But I can find no record, record of that, although Arthur remarried. So why was my grandfather abandoned and did his parents get divorced? So, Carol, can you help Hayley find out more about her great grandparents and why yeah. her poor grandfather was sent off? Yeah, it's it is really difficult, isn't it? I mean, as a as a young child of five, it must have been mm. really hard for him to be sent on the train to and grandparents. People just didn't tell their kids things. It's yeah, terrible. I mean, you know, grandparents that he may not even have met at that point. It must be really difficult. Um, <clears throat> it's it is difficult to know whether or not they they got divorced. I mean, I did do a little look up this morning and um sort of like he and he married annie in uh, 1915 in hereford um and then you know edwin was born a few years later in 1919 so if he was five when he was sent off that would be 1924 um and i did find on the 1939 national register that um his, his father was living with his second wife um alice 
um, in Hereford and they had two, two children at least, um, the eldest of which was born in 1929. So it does seem like they were sort of like, you know, at least together as a, a couple at that point. Mm. But they didn't get married until 1941. Um, so there's obviously, you know, sort of some reason behind that. Perhaps Alice, which was his second wife, perhaps her first husband was still alive and maybe she couldn't get a divorce from him. Um, or maybe they could get a divorce, but they didn't get one until later on. And um, the problem with divorce records, of course, is that they're subject to the 100 year rule um, because of privacy, you know, sort of things. So it's very difficult to know whether there actually was a divorce or, or not. Um, I'm not really quite sure where she can go with this one, um, because it's difficult when you've you've got just someone's impressions. I mean, we look back as, you know, family historians and we'll look at records and, you know, photographs and maps and things like that. And we can build up a picture of uh, somebody's life. But what the person actually was feeling at the time and, you know, sort of what they they thought is, is really hard. Um, one thing I would suggest is actually look at some maybe newspaper records to see if there's anything there that might give an idea as to why um you know the child was sent away it could be that his second wife alice did, just didn't you know want to bring up somebody else's child and perhaps um annie couldn't look after him um did find her in 1939 and she was a, a chambermaid in uh, in hereford um at a place called the axe and cleaver so perhaps she just didn't couldn't afford to to bring yeah. up a child and therefore Not a well paid job is it no, that's it. So, I mean, you know, the grandparents could have been the best place for him at yeah. the time. But of course, how do you explain that to a five year old boy? And it's, you know, the, people didn't talk about things like that at that time. No. So it's unlikely that, you know, his dad or his grandparents sort of said, well, you know, this is the reason why, you know. So it's, it's so hard and it's such sadness that, you know, he died before, you know, he found out why. Yeah, very sad. And I think uh, that idea that it's for the, they, I think they, People did feel it was for the best, probably, for him, and and that you know seeing his mother might upset him. But to us now, it just seems so harsh, doesn't it? It does. But, yeah. You know, thank you very much for um, coming on today, Carol, and casting your eye over these three brick walls. We've you know come up with some new avenues of research for people, and um, it's been really uh, helpful. I hope that uh, everyone enjoyed that, and thank you once again for coming on. Okay, thank you very much. Goodbye. Thanks.